Well, I have 6.59, but we'll say it's 7 o'clock because uh, the village administrator is... Uh, why are you in the hurry? Uh, no, 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 sir. No, not at all. All right, let me get my stuff here. All right, uh, we are in motion, and I'd ask the clerk to call, call the roll, please. Dusty Grundon? Here. Dusty Mansell? Here. Dusty McGregor? Here. Dusty Mitchell? Here. Trustee Radke? Here. And Trustee Saylor? Here. Okay, uh, before we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance tonight, instead of our usual moment of silence for our military, um, we're going to have our moment of silence for Lester Pinky Emerson, who was a villain firefighter here in Port Edward for 30 plus years. And some of our law enforcement officers from Wood County went down to Milwaukee yesterday for Officer Peter Jervian's funeral. He was killed last week in a robbery in the north side of Milwaukee. He was a four-year veteran, and uh, due to uh, keep him in mind, okay? I Thank you very much. Please proceed. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I was just reminded if I should know that. When I moved back home in 78, got hired by Theo Stewart, police chief at the time. Uh, Pinky Emerson was our village foreman, and he was also that for probably 40 years or, or more in there. So, yeah, <clears throat> that's why I'm wearing the jacket. I bought this or got it bought for me by my daughter, um, just in case you ever know somebody that got killed in the line of duty and... Uh, this, uh, this touched home because you heard about the uh, Wood County Sheriff's Department or 50 Milwaukee PD. Maybe about a month ago, they were chasing two armed robbers from Milwaukee and caught them in Grand Rapids. So this one, this one hit the boys a little, a little harder. So not for me. Okay. Uh, before, I'm going to, without objection, I'm going to take the consent agenda first, and then we'll get to uh, Senator Cheston. Uh, Chair, I recognize the motion to approve the consent agenda for the meeting minutes of uh, 10 January 23 and our vouchers paying the monthly bills, journal entries, et cetera. I move for approval. I'll second. Uh, okay, Trustees Mitchell and Mantle, any discussion? Hearing no request to speak, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion carries unanimously. Um, I'm going to uh, refer introducing Senator Teston, who uh, over the years has become a, uh, a uh, good man to talk to for all things political, but also he does tell some good jokes on occasion too. So Patrick, I'll be expecting a few of those in a couple weeks at Mid-State. Baj, you want to do the introduction and what we're going to be doing tonight? Well, we have a, uh, I appreciate Senator Tesson taking time out of his busy schedule, especially on uh, Valentine's evening. But uh, with all the issues going on in Madison and his office's consistent support to the village, anytime I have an issue or question, be it the mill, be it financing, being something, I reach out to his office and he's, he's either getting a call from the chief of staff or him. And I greatly appreciate that from his office. Uh, and uh, so we took this opportunity while you all are here uh, to uh, have him address you. I put two topics on the calendar there, sir, but you, you free fire, you do what you want. And uh, we'll just open the floor to you, sir. All right. Well, I really appreciate the opportunity to join you virtual. I'd love to be there in person, but I am down in Madison as we get ready for uh, the governor's budget address tomorrow. Uh, so kind of a 
overview of this session. So this session, I chair the uh, labor regulatory reform, and then the uh, veterans military military affairs committee. I also serve on the uh, ag and tourism committee, vice chair of the senate health committee, and the the big committee I'm on this year is the joint finance committee. So we are already uh, rolling up our sleeves, getting ready for um, the next several months as we work on the next state budget, which I know there's a lot of uh, discussions right now as it relates to shared revenue. Um, obviously, we get it that with the revenue limits that been, have been put in place for decades now, it has really hamstrung local units of government, especially right now with inflation impacting everyone. As I've talked to a lot of town officials, county officials throughout my district, you know, I'm hearing the various projects that they put out the bid a couple of years ago. For instance, I've got a township in Jackson County where uh, a few years ago they put in a bid to reconstruct a bridge, which was at the time going to cost them roughly around two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. But now, because of the rising cost, uh, it's well over six hundred thousand. So, as of right now, where it stands, I do think there's going to be an appetite within the legislature to. Um, Rechange or change up shared revenue and have a more equitable system, getting more money out of Madison back home to the locals. Now, right now, the discussions are very high level. So two of my colleagues, uh, Senator Mary Falskowski and Representative Tony Kurtz, who both serve on the Finance Committee, have been working on a plan, working with the Counties Association, working with um, the League of Municipalities, the towns, and also a specific uh, to the city of Milwaukee and Milwaukee County because they have some separate issues of their own dealing with their own pension system. So as it stands right now, we don't have a lot of details. So I'm um, hoping you'll cut me a little, some slack here tonight, but as things develop, I'll be more than happy to keep in loop with you guys because again, we're hearing it across the board. I mean, just last week I was at a Towns Association unit meeting for in Stevens Point and every town official I've talked to is discussing how it is just an unfair system. When shared revenue was put in place, it was a, supposed to be 90% going back to local units of government. Over the years, that has been shipped away to the point where some municipalities or townships are only receiving roughly about 5%. So I guess the one joke I have there is we're close. We started at 90%, we're at five. Uh, so we've got a lot of room to make up here and hopefully close that gap going into this biennium. Now, the one thing I do want to caution is that you're hearing a lot of discussions on the nightly news about the state has a $7 billion surplus. That is 100% true. We do have, in fact, a $7 billion surplus. But one of the major driving forces of that surplus is that the state of Wisconsin was a direct uh, beneficiary of roughly $60 billion in uh, COVID money that came down from the feds. Now, some of this were direct stimulus payments to individuals. Some of this went directly to local units of government, to school districts, and then a large chunk of it went to the governor of the dole while throughout his administration. And there's still uh, a lot of unspent federal dollars. But the reason I, I mention that, when you factor in inflation, that's another huge driver into the surplus. So because of the increase in goods, we've had a huge surge in into our general fund as it relates to sales taxes. So when you take a look at our ledger right now on our balance sheet, so factoring the continuing spend, spend for various programs in places like K-12 education, transportation, our Medicaid budget, you've re really, you whittled that $7 billion surplus down to about $3 billion that we feel comfortable enough, at least from our perspective on the Joint Finance Committee, of what we have to play with. Now, obviously, we can make some changes. There are proposals that are already out in the legislature right now. Uh, one in particular that the village is probably aware of is the full repeal of the personal property tax that um, we had it in the budget last go around. It's about a $200 million tax cut and it hit to local municipalities that we are going to backfill use in general appropriation dollars that has already been accounted for going into this budget session. So that 200 million has been set aside. We're hoping that we can get the full repeal of the personal property tax and then use GPR to backfill that. Um, in conversations that I've had with um, the league, the towns, the counties, I do think there is going to be an appetite within the legislature to do a $200 million one-time investment again into the Elbert program. Uh, this has been a very successful program, although I do think there needs to be some tweaks made because based on the number of grants that were submitted versus, versus what was actually allocated, there's a huge need and a lot of projects that went unfunded. 
Um, when it comes to some other issues that I wanted to discuss as it relates to the paper mills, particularly both in Port Edwards and the Verso mill up in Rapids. So one of the ideas that we've been floating around and I had a conversation with the new DNR secretary, um, Adam Payne, and I'm hoping to have a conversation here in the next couple of weeks with WEDC secretary, Missy Hughes, is that oftentimes in the past when we've had mills closed down, we've done one-off pieces of legislation. Now, we tried doing that in uh, last session using some of the federal dollars to provide a loan for the Verso mill that unfortunately got vetoed. But one of the ideas being talked about is to create a revolving loan fund for the forestry and paper industry. So that way, whether it's trying to identify new product lines to help with innovation, create new lines, when issues pop up, we could have an available pot of money available at the state to help them get back on their feet and ensure that the um, paper industry remains a thriving one here in the state of Wisconsin. So that's still at a very high level, ongoing conversations to see what the appetite would be if we were to do something either as a standalone bill to create this revolving loan fund or potentially in the budget. But so far, the conversations I've had, at least with the new DNR secretary, they seem somewhat um, willing to come to the table and have conversations. And like I said, uh, with Missy Hughes, I'm hoping to sit down with her in the next week or so to um, see what, what their appetite would be over at WEDC. Uh, the other issue I want to discuss, because this is I've been approached by a couple of folks from the village as it, as it relates to uh, a bridge uh, connecting Highway 54 and I believe 73. So back in 2009, there was a study done by DOT to see if there would be a viable option. Now, as you're well aware, uh, that never came to fruition and certainly no new bridge. But we did reach out to the Department of Transportation uh, here in the last couple of days. And one of the well, they said the best way to get the ball moving on that would be to work with the county highway department and see if there's any appetite at the county level to then push it up to the state. And so we're going to keep exploring options on that front as well. And uh, more than happy to work with the village to uh, address these issues and uh, hopefully um, see if we can't get something done here in the next couple of years. Because I know based on the conversation I've had with folks at the fire department, the fact that the department has to call uh, serve calls on the other side of the river, there's no easy way to get there. And we know that in issues of fire and EMS, uh, time can be a matter of life and death. And so uh, I certainly see the, the viability for that project. And uh, we're going to do what we can on our end to help uh, both the village as well as the county and, and work with the Department of Transportation to see if we can get this one done. So that's kind of the, the big ticket items right now. I'm happy to take any questions that anyone has, but I know uh, once tomorrow hits, the governor will give his budget address. Immediately thereafter, uh, we'll be in the finance committee to accept the budget. Uh, what I've been telling people is what you'll most likely see as has been in the past, even under uh, Governor Walker, is that we will take his budget and then build um, a new budget off of the current base budget. Uh, and there's not going to be any fis any non-fiscal policy in the budget process, similar to what we did the last two budgets, which I think has been a, a pretty streamlined process. And uh, I think it's really uh, allowed the legislature to zero in on what the budget actually is and not litter, litter in it with a bunch of policy items that uh, are often non oftentimes non-starters for the legislature and should be run as standalone bills. For Senator Teston, you guys are easy. <laughs> <laughs> I do have. Some. Uh, hey, sir. Uh, two things, and, and I've been here on this before. That we just got to keep beating the drum. The whole federal infrastructure bill. Uh, I got it. We submitted eight projects through DOT. All eight were denied because they didn't meet the federal criteria. And, and that's kind of defeat the whole purpose of us having a truly valid project that we were willing to put money against 20%. And at the federal level, through the state, a decision arbitrarily was made that you didn't check off enough blocks, so we're not going to give you any money. So definitely that some thought needs to be put into that. And then tied to that is the whole EV um, plan that the state produced. Uh, it basically totally avoided eight counties. There are eight counties in the state where there's no EV infrastructure being even identified, 
and Wood County is one of those. We're not near uh, a highway. Uh, we then came back to the state and said, you know, we have a proposal locally that we again are looking for funding and, and match it with our county money and village money. And the answer back from the state EV plan was we have a state plan that focuses on highways. Five years from now, we'll think about expanding it. I, I, I think there's just two missed opportunities when you have a local government with citizen input wanting to do good things and we're being squashed because we're, we're not meeting a lot of federal and now state level criteria. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, no, I, I share your frustration. And that's actually, I brought that up to Secretary Craig Thompson when I met with them about two weeks ago, uh, because tomorrow we're the, what's before the Joint Finance Committee, um, we're going to be in session to um, take a look at the DOT's federal plan to utilize some of those federal dollars. And you're right, it, it's a disparity. Now, I think, and I, I will give Craig Thompson um, a lot of credit, you know, for a lot of what he has been tasked to do with the requirements that came down from the federal government, um, there's a lot of strings attached to it. And that's the other thing I want to caution too, for any um, projects that get approved at the local level with this federal money, Davis-Bacon requirements kick in at $3,000. And so you can expect that pot of money, now 25% of it's gone to pay for prevailing wages. And so when I had the conversation with Secretary Thompson, looking at the map that they put out, I couldn't help but notice that, yeah, there were key areas of the state that were just overlooked. And I can understand, you know, I'm sure they put thought into taking a look at where these EV, where the concentration of the EVs were located, but still that leaves us in certain areas of the state where we just don't have that infrastructure. And I know the um, Wisconsin Electric Cooperative, as well as um, uh, other folks are coming to the table too, to see what can be done to uh, continue to uh, expand that infrastructure needed for EVs, especially as more and more are coming on to into the market. And I think that's also going to tie into a conversation as well as just how we fund transportation as a whole, because I think most people are aware right now with the gas tax, you've got more fuel efficient vehicles on the roads, we've got more hybrid electric vehicles, and that trend's going to continue. That's one of the reasons why in the last budget, we wanted to put a half percent of GPR and put it into the transportation fund to help put us back to where we needed to be. Because going back to then Governor Doyle, when the transportation fund was rated to plug holes in other parts of the budget, and why a 2014 constitutional amendment that passed basically said, the transportation fund is strictly for transportation purposes. And that passed overwhelmingly back in 2014 but we're still lagging behind where we should be because of removing gas indexing and then also because of the more fuel efficient vehicles on the road. So it's becoming an antiquated way to fund our, our, our highway systems. And um, so I think we're gonna have to get creative as we take a look, whether it's increasing registration fees or using the sales tax on electric vehicles and then putting that back into expanding EV infrastructure uh, all around the state. I, I think I'm having some technical difficulties. I, I can't hear if uh, anyone's asking a question. Yeah, do I need to get closer there? Let's, let's yep. Hi, Mr. Tesson. I'm, I'm Lon Racky. I'm on the Village Board of Trustee. Uh, can you hear me all right? Yep. Okay. My question is, um, you were talking about money being allocated for uh, paper mills, maybe reinvestment. Um, in Wisconsin Rapids, of course, Verso, they, their mill is still their machines are still in the mill that probably could maybe be revamped and, and used again in some type of different industry. Unfortunately, here in the village, um, our building is half demolished and the other ones that stand are probably not, that are probably going to have to be demolished. I know some of the properties are in sheriff sale. Um, my question is, would there be money available or could there be money available for redevelopment of that property to tear down, maybe build apartment buildings or things like uh, that? Was that something that would be um, in the realm of uh, the money for the paper mill? Yeah, I think that's I think that's a potential possibility. I mean, there are a number of programs housed over at WEDA, uh, WEDC, 
to help with redevelopments. And I know in years past, we've utilized and, and codified uh, legislation at the state level to mirror some of the legislation that came down for economic development at the federal level using opportunity zones and, and things like that to help with um, uh, projects that are in the blast that have been sitting idle. So. Uh, we can take a look and see what's available and what might qualify for the, the Port Edwards location. I know, what was it, just last, was that two summers ago? Last summer, there was a developer who was looking at the mill and had potential interest, but I think because of the lack of access to expanded rail and the size of the plant was kind of a, a tough sell for him. So I think if we can find the right developer and the right buyer, we certainly have the tools at the state and as well as the federal level to try and uh, maximize a potential investment. Our highway commissioner and with uh, Gary Bosser here, our village administrator, uh, would we be able to uh, possibly set up a meeting uh, here in Port Edwards sometime here in our area? Yeah, no, absolutely. I'd be more than happy to do that. Um, typically right now with uh, session, um, I'm usually down in Madison Tuesday through Thursdays. And so Mondays, Fridays, the weekends, whatever works best for you guys, we can uh, certainly uh, get that set up. So just reach out to my office and we'll get some something on the book sooner rather than later. Thank you, sir. Anybody else for the Senator? Well, that's it, Senator Teston. Thank you very much and good luck on the budget tomorrow. Well, I appreciate it. Well, and if anyone has any, uh, any more questions, comments, concerns, ideas, uh, feel free to reach out to my office and know my door is always open for you and hope to see you in person real soon. Take care. God Thank bless. You. Thank you. Okie dokie. We've gone through the motion for the approved the consent agenda. agenda. Uh, time for any public comments. Anybody have anything they wish to address to the board now or at the time the item was brought up? No? Quiet crowd tonight. Uh, president's report, I have nothing, and we'll go into the committee report. Any questions on the airport commission minutes? Some kind of a uh, quiet meeting issue that we're having over there. I told you last month our fuel system issue is now taken care of and uh, pretty much there. Excuse me. Bob, I wonder if the attendance is the attendees are all still muted when there was public comment. Well, I mean, they're here most. Right, but I wonder if they had public uh, Ms. comment. Ms. Moore, Mr. Trannell, you need to, you, you had any public comment? No. I just muted him. Uh, there are a hiatus, uh, nothing has come before that. So, next meeting right now, the chairman is discussing a March meeting to the policy annual for the PSC. This is not that we're still. Public works met on January 18th. The things that we discussed were for well, the folks for engineering on Spring Street. Things can be done. The engineering is good. I think they're back yet that I'm aware of. So that you're aware that we are. One of the other things that I'd like to mention, uh, which we've probably seen them around, 
trees. We have a number of trees. Ash burn disease seen in river. They're going to take care of as many as they can. We should be visiting them now. Some of the trees being in the boulevard, they get older, bigger ones, eating in sidewalks, curves, roads. So we did discuss in public words, maybe not replacing So it's just something that we discussed, and I wanted to mention to the board before the discussion. be in this area that won't cause issues. Other than that, um, everything you know, seems to be fairly well. Other. Well, to roll. And that's now that is just the engineering that we're going to do this year is get the engineering because that's going to be a costly project. Two years or three years. Uh, so, so that's just the engineering of it right now because that's going to be after the all dug up. Okay, we met January 25th. Um, we things thing thinking we have about it. Thank you. Thank you. How much that labor is going to cost, and how much that would be. Good conversation on that. I haven't heard any complaints. We're still working on some fundraising efforts to do the smaller dog area. Thanks. A citizen group came up with a different person to me to discuss getting it. Them to fundraising. From the committee standpoint, they do
so horror to come on in. She was working on the He has. Issues. is Sure. Is a section survey. You know, got some questions. Yeah. 
<clears throat> study that we had done um, three years ago. Um, and 90% of the adjustment, considering that it's been three years old, I think the guidance is given. In meeting resolution UGRC two in the conference date. Evaluate the steward revenue model. Twenty year, twenty years ago, the locals were seen. This year, yeah, two hundred. Twenty years later, sixty some odd percent. Patient, we're actually four percent. Shows you that the model. This is a support that all of this power together. Yeah, we met on February first. And kind of what we wanted to start this for ordinances and clean them up. So we we try to kind of make it so every month. We'll split, read them, see some changes. So this month we did uh, chapter 10 instances. And hopefully we made some changes. I'm assuming next month. So it'll be available for you guys to read and deliver. Um, so we just we talked about that, and then lastly we had a Eric was here, and if anybody's been sitting in on any of those the late meetings, I'm talking. He was available for comments, and with that, I would like to make a motion to support. A motion to approve and support the resolution. The creation of the Nepal Lake District. A second. Uh, chairman, motion by Chairman Sailor. Resolution.
out of the 279. Derek and but Dom Carr, they own. Yes. Petition that was not seventy percent. They could have reformed. Reframing that. I think the uh, most you have. Made it vocally that it gets Okay. Uh, we have a meeting tomorrow. Brought up on finished business. Meeting agendas, minutes, packets. 
Let's understand it. End of meeting, you're actually going to see the entire you all back dating those and then go back to this near and then go into the things up with those. We're both to establish a YouTube page. We should finish that up this week. So, if you all Facebook. Counties would uh, well, sailor, you can hit up your Oh, and <laughs> um, we have a sorry. Um, we have a CSM right? um, of the Port Plaza event, and it is for the great rep of the parcel between six A and six B. So. The, the motion is in for Oh, you're not looking it up. The motion to approve CSM grade two thirty one. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the CSM Plaza Condominium. Second. Ready. This is solely for your bought two parcels. We're making three parcels to sell next so, so. The only question I have is then uh yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that building all separate from the store and model? Or is, do they, even though we divide it here on paper, how is that? So, one of the steps are for the subdivision. Just finished the other. That's another. Water was always separated. This was the last step. We had a question that is, we are we the now is to sell it to, yes, to the restaurant to the restaurant and they're taking care of the that part of the sales price discussion is the okay. Okay. So those are things we work on. <laughs> Should be able to bring back the kit. Yeah.
Oh, his business. Yeah. No, because uh, the initial intent is he wants to use it for not only storage in the back, but for meeting the space in the front. So that's what he wants to use it for. He has, he has connected us with two interested parties. Let's restore it. He would make it better. He is bringing in interest. He's not interested. Step out. Give it to her. Give it to her. Trustee Tanya. Oh. Here. Um, when was this FHR meeting? Water. That would be in place from all the strikes. <laughs> <laughs> Something that would be in place like who's gonna who's gonna know where to pick. Executive type goals with the meeting sit down and say, okay, this week we're going to go Well, dealing with the uh, police department, and I'm sure Lana will agree with me, we can't really do anything because they've got all that covered already with what they do. But as far as the other stuff goes, um, I don't know, Chief, in the fire department, you will pretty much autonomous in that regard too, aren't you, as far as? Tony, you should bring this up. Just leaning in. <laughs> Beginning of the year, um, one of my plans is at uh, each public safety meeting, we're going to rotate through the officer. Um, one officer uh, is being asked to attend one meeting per year. And in preparation for that meeting, they're going to go through the, the end of the month reports, things like that. So my goal is that when I leave that position, that every Every officer has a, a pretty good grasp on, on what's all involved in it and how to do it, things like that. So that's exactly what, you know, like for something like that across the village that, you know, chief and the police department would have something in place if he goes down. This is the priorities. I think they're already doing that internally. Um, I know Ben, um, Kenny, and Jason. Yes, they're all qualified they're, all together because mm -hmm, yes. they, they hold each other. One goes on vacation, you know, they cover each other. And then Diane and Kim, Diane, if you don't mind, are are you guys able to mutually? No? No, but 
being there's some things with my job that other people shouldn't be able to get access to. Mm -hmm. You know, like the accounting table. Right. So we we have if, if that's fine. We have a what I call the bench plan. It's internal. What I probably need to do is share that with the FHR to see if you all are accepting of that bench plan. It's worked for three years now. Uh, and even like this scenario here, yes, there's there's levels that someone goes out for sickness, vacation. Uh, but in this scenario, not only do we have a chief that's a slash patrolman, we have sheriff coverage that they come down and they have more of a presence in the village. But what I will do is the next FHR, I'll show you our bench plan. And uh, and the only one, honestly, that doesn't have uh, the gap coverage is myself. I either appoint one of my department heads to sit in, um, and, and that's it. Uh, we don't have that depth with my position. All the other positions, we do have some depth that someone can cover for a week, 10 days, and then we can figure it out. But I'll share that with FHR. You guys tell me if it's on, if it's on or we need I to. I think it would be worthy yeah. of developing that on your job where, I mean, you just, tomorrow's not promised to anybody. So if something would happen that we'd have some kind of framework to work within. Well, since that's the uh, human resource like type thing, personally, I think you should. Uh, here. Maybe you want to put that on one of your future budgets. Yeah. Anything else? Okay. I feel, only, oh. oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to make, I'm gonna make hand, you wait. Oh. Sue, go ahead. Well, I, I don't even know what my hand is up for anymore. Oh. Go ahead. I'll figure it out. <laughs> the new sign, the new village sign by the fire department. I've seen it several times now, and it's it's good to see it and have meetings advertised or what you know whatever is on there. At least people see that driving into town. I parked there for ten minutes each day, day waiting for my first typo. There you go. Oh, <laughs> there was one the other day. I'm glad there was you. one. There was. Ben does the typing. Oh, oh yeah, right. <laughs> people. All right. <laughs> Uh, Baz, I have old now blind. Yeah, yeah. So the only thing I had was uh, I'm I'm glad that uh, the sale hopefully will come soon of the parcel here, and that we should uh, you know support the new restaurant when they do open. Seems like they're trying to bring people into the village and they're trying to do the right thing. And uh, you know my opinion on that is to sell it as quick as we can so that we're not in the rental business. So thank you. You're retired, cool everyone. I'm sorry I ignored you three times. It was almost like you and I are working together. Yeah. All right. Baz, you're not going to believe this, but you go into your we'll go administrative point. report. You have your and, summary. And then you switch right into the committee meeting. Yes, sir. You have your All summary. Right. Uh, we talked most of these things. We're beginning of the year, so I'm not going to spend time on the payroll or the budget execution. There's no burning issues with public safety. Uh, we will have uh, we have a second work study student just uh, interviewed today. He'll come on board. He's a Nakusa resident that uh, is, is big into IT, so he'll be able to help us with some of the IT stuff. But he's going to take on the challenge of helping me with the, the our wage study uh, to present that to FHR. Under general government, we talked about the Nepo Lake. We talked about the uh, the parcels and how we're moving forward on those. What uh, I would ask some thought put into is our strategic meeting in April. So right now we have not only the primary, we have the election, and then that rolls right into our reorg meeting. Uh, last year, we discussed that we did it on a Saturday. There was some feedback that for us to get different uh, uh, experts, I'll call them from either Madison, the league, a weekday might be better, but it's based on y'all schedules. So what I would ask is that if, if a discussion tonight could be followed up by probably a, an FHR meeting or the next board meeting, the week of uh, 18 April, which is the Tuesday that we have right now originally for our reorg meeting, all the way through that Saturday is kind of the window of time that I think we need to plan our strategic meeting. And we could lump in the reorg meeting at the beginning, beginning of it. Um, if I may yeah. interrupt. The reorg meeting since I think the Dead Sea was sick. 
to go, go Glen Denning. Um, that meeting is just basically the clerk calls it to order. You take care of all your bolts and everything, but it's got to be separate from, you know. But the other stuff during that sure. week before, the old board is still yes. sitting. So. Yes, the, the April board meeting is y'all, even mm -hmm. after the election. Mm -hmm. The 18th is when we we seat the new board. Who is the clerk calls that meeting yeah. to order? Yeah, new board. And then we would roll into that week of our strategic meeting. So the, the thought I just need, because it, it, if it's here, it's great. I'll just put a line of tables down the middle and we'll all meet here. We'll have lunch here and do what we do. If you want us to do it off site again, we got to have that discussion. And so we know the need, we know we have some options. I just need some thought put into it because it's truly only two meetings out. And not only the location, but the packets and the get invited guests, we need to have that thought. Could we do it here and have them cater? We we definitely could. Uh, I think for what you saw last year for the attendees, if we change the format here to maybe just one central table, we just sit on both sides of it mm -hmm. and we stretch it out and then you could have citizens involved and spread throughout. I think this is plenty of space for what we had. And you're exactly right. We can support our local business. We can walk over there or they come here for meals. And that'd be a good thing Let's to show us support for that day. The, the thought I guess I need is you want to do it on that Saturday? Or do you want to try to do it during the week? So I'll leave it for a quick discussion. Now, this is going to be under the uh, jurisdiction of the new board. Do I well, sure. That? Yeah. It, it, okay. After the reorg meeting, it's your new board strategic meeting. Yeah. I would, I would, I would personally like a weekend date. I think you're going to get better attendance. Yeah. I think you have better attendance from us on a weekend. Right. You know, Tetson said that he's more available on the, on the yeah. weekends. And I don't know, whoever else would be invited. It's easier for me personally. Might well, speak for my members. only um, thing I have to say on, on the probably that after the election, you're going to know who your new board is and who the new president is. So that is the time you, because there's nothing illegal about you talking to the new people. Before the no, 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 I just want to throw it out there. That right. We kind of need a decision right. from that first week of March for me to lock in anything. Right. So I don't need a decision tonight, but first week of March is only two weeks away. So put some thought into it and either individually get back with me and then I can share the consensus. And then at the next either committee meetings or definitely by the next board meeting, we can put together a motion that we will set the date. Because right now I got the league wants to send a, a, a rep. We have Destin, we have Krug, we have Plimmel, we have county uh, um, finance, county economic development. Uh, and then we have our usual suspects surrounding community, Saratoga Board, Nakusa, Rapids. I mean, they all want to come to hear what we're doing so they can help inform what we're doing or so on. Or if we need more room, could we do it in the outdoor classroom at Ripple? We could, yeah, yeah. Once once I lock in a date, I'll I'll see how many attendees. You're right, yeah. We could go there, and then the same. We just ask him to cater, and he brings the food out there. So yeah, so that, that's that's just keep that on your radar. Uh, in your packet, you have the village sign. You have the deer thing. I don't need to go into that. That's for your reading pleasure. You have the village sign. So these are the signs that we bought with ARPA money. That uh, it's basically a a a standard sign for all the businesses along here and across the street. Right now, I'm still in discussion with the post office because they have some federal rules. Uh, mm -hmm. This is not going to include, right now, it's not going to include the electrical guys or Port Auto or the bank. It could in the future. So we have a standard sign, which is the blue background, the trees. It has a numerical designator for the, the parcel. And then what you see in the middle is a, it's a three-dimensional. So you see those four little dots, for example, the municipal building. Those are, it's a raised separate sign. So if the business changes, we're just changing that portion. Instead of the whole. It goes away. The regular sign is flush. 201 stays the same. And in that scenario, a new business comes in. We would just change out that for like a hundred bucks. Not we, but the business. Is it vinyl? It, well, it's a metal sign. It's a metal so sign. these are all metal signs with a, uh, a metal uh, laser input of the uh, the trees and the graphics. This is a local guy, Anderson. Uh, he's over there by the school, local business. So we're supporting our local businesses. 
Okay. So for the businesses, they've all looked at it. They've all approved their copies of them. They're good with the sign. What I'm showing you here is that if we want to go forward with municipal building and this structure, it's changing what's out there. It's not going to say municipal building anymore. It's not going to say Marshall Bueller Center. It's if we want to go forward with it, I would like to be able to order the signs. We don't have to put them up right away if you guys need time to think on it, but we're getting a bulk rate here. I like to buy and keep them in storage and then add them at a later date if you want to do that. Otherwise, for the municipal building, it's just that municipal building, 201. For here, we have two options, either call it the Village Hall or call it the Marshall Bueller Center. Thank you. It's right we, there. We, we have two we, options. Right. We went in this whole thing about dedicating this building sure. to Marshall. And by calling it the Village Hall, two things. It's, it's kind of like another municipal building in a sense. And uh, the history of what the man did to the village, I would never support change on that. Totally with you. That's why you have two options here. So I would like to get, we don't need a vote. I just need consensus. If you're good with this, then for these two signs, I'll always get them ordered. If we want to wait on the emplacement of them, I'll do all the businesses first and then we can add ours later. But I think it's uh, it's not only refreshes our downtown, it gives us a standard look. The colors we have chosen avoid us needing to put lights on these signs because of the, the white background and the way we're popping out the, the numbers. So they're not lighted signs. And I think it's just one more step to revitalize our downtown. I Any mean, discussion? Good idea. Except for Marshall Bueller. You like Marshall Bueller Center. Oh, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny. I, I'm not sure I want the Marshall Dealer sign to come down, but I like the idea yep. of having everybody okay. identified as a part, a piece of one bigger whole. So he's our village historian. So is that consensus? Are we good? So I can order at least our two signs. The businesses were ordered. That's done. Sure. I just need to know from you all of the two buildings that we own. And that's out of ARPA money? This is ARPA money. You already funded it. Uh, so this will pay it off, and then we'll get them. It's about two weeks, so I won't be. Able, I'm trying to get it for him to have it up for his opening day. It may be a couple of days later. But what about uh, all the existing holes from the old? Well, this is installed by Village Crew. That's the cost savings there. So uh, Ben's able to mount these flush on. It's a four by eight sheet almost. So for the most part, some of these will be covered up. Uh, and there's going to be some jury rigging somewhere, I'm sure. With the sandstorm, I mean, they're all kind of yeah. And we just don't want them front of the building falling off the way yeah, we there. Yeah. Pause. I have a re related question. Yeah. Um, as these uh, businesses come in, are they responsible for putting a sign out uh, on the highway where the auto over there? Is that is that our signage or is that with the? No, that was started by the business association. Okay. I've re addressed them. I'm having a meeting with them in uh, March to refresh those signs. Having them all, since we're doing this for them, having them all contribute to refresh that sign. Uh, El Cafe wants to add a portion, uh, so they need they need a refresh. But that's owned by okay. the business folks, not us. Okay, so we'll move forward with that uh, next week. The winds are the 21st through the 23rd in here from 12 to 1 30. I'll be participating in the League of Municipalities uh, open session that they have for general government. They're going to talk about funding, all that type of stuff. It's just all on Zoom. I'll be here. If you all want to pop in to attend, please tell me. If more than two of you are going to pop in, just tell me and I'll just notice each of the meetings and you all can come if you want. But it's just going to be here watching the Zoom channel and and then we can notice it in case you all are interested. It's open to citizens. It's just the league bringing on some experts to explain some stuff that's going on for local government. And we did submit two grants through Legacy as well as through the WDC, uh, 250K through Legacy to do our uh, uh, downtown refurbishment to include electric vehicle charging stations. This was the county grant that they denied. You heard me mention it tonight. So if legacy funds that, then in part of our redevelopment down here with resurfacing, we will add a couple of electric charging stations out here, as well as throughout the village, uh, at all our parks, at our uh, Edgewater, and in the village garage for future potential electric vehicles we may purchase. So just as a heads up, because I don't know anything about EV, but there is an electric charging station. It's the only one in Rapids at Wheeler's Auto. Isn't there one in the state? Yes. But the one at Wheeler's, they just put it in, had never even pulled the plug off to charge, and a snowplow hit it. 
and it is not a fix oh, yeah. plates, whatever. Yeah. It is get rid of and start for twenty seven thousand yeah. dollars. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mom, with you. Me and Ben have sat down. We're going to make sure we put them in the right areas. We have the right trees and uh, metal buffers around them. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're we're thinking ahead on that. One. So, uh, so those grants are in. We'll see if Legacy gives us some additional money on that. And I think going into your meetings. Uh, yeah. Any questions on the report? I have a question. Can I? Go ahead. I'm like extending. Talking about signs. Who owns the blue ones, you know, that are about that big? And uh, they were made by the state corrective department or department of corrections. And who we, control? We, they belong to the village. Yeah, we, oh, we okay. they're free. We send them to the department of corrections annually and they give us a bunch. New so, uh, yeah, they make them new for us. Oh, okay. So if there's ones we want to add, we just build a list. They can't guarantee delivery. They just, we just kind of hit them once a year. Oh, okay. Uh, so, uh, your meetings are cut and dry starting tomorrow. We go, uh, did change to two typos there, or more typos for you, President. 22 February are your public works and your parks and rec meetings. And 22 February at four o'clock, we'll have uh, parks and rec. And then following at five o'clock, uh, followed right by public works this month. And then uh, your next board meetings on the 14th of March. So, your same kind of timeline. And then seven, eight, nine are your regular weekly meetings. Subject to that change, that's all I have for your meetings. You know, some of the discussions that we started out with was uh, the state aid at 90% or down to 5%. If you remember, he was talking about well, electric cars, all those coming on the roads, the things with fuel tax is going down. Keep it open. Let's just keep burning gas so we get some money. To the, the system that we are looking at, just for your information purposes, is a system that generates some revenue for the building. Oh. So you're not getting free. We're not giving you free electricity here. Well, I'm an environmentalist. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be a simple <laughs> fee, but you'll be able to charge for a, uh, a period of time, and we will collect a portion of that as revenue to help maintain the, the, the systems. Without objection. I hate to end this. This is a lot of fun. I will declare this meeting adjourned at 8 14 p.m. Thank you very much. Nikki's heart cell phone too. We're a fee. Like, our food for a fee. How they said it's first time. Small fee. Yeah. 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 Yeah.